Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing the song of praise. God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, granted so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Kandasi, queen of the Ethiopians, in a charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? and he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shear, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water. 
And the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read together Psalm 22, found in your insert. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to people yet unborn in saving deeds that he has done. Our second reading is from John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. But this we know that we abide in him and that he is in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the father has sent his son as the savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believed that the love that God has for us, God is love and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, for those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sequence hymn 654.
praise you, Lord Christ. <coughs> Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away by the branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Ignatius of, Bi Ignatius of Loyola began the Jesuit order, and he also um, established what's called the Ignatius Exper spiritual exercises, Ignatian spiritual exercises. And it is a nine month commitment. The final reflective prayer of those exercises includes 10 verses from scripture. I'm not going to identify those verses, I just want to read through this reflective prayer. Through the power of his spirit, we are a people Jesus claims as his own, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. As members of his body, knit together in unity with diversity of gifts. Hence, when we pray together as a community, as one body, Jesus is in our midst, and the communal decisions that we make because of Jesus' Spirit's teaching, so that with this power we can bear much fruit. These words reflect the understanding and faith that is deepened during a focused, intentional nine-month journey with God and with fellow seekers, that extends into our lives. Through the reading of scripture, reflection, prayer, conversation, spiritual exercises, we become aware of the movements of God in creating us, Jesus being made human for us, and dying on the cross and rising from the dead for our salvation and the Spirit who continues to teach us and to guide us. The God of love and mercy and grace is revealed. The 15th chapter of John's Gospel begins with Jesus' words to his disciples that describe the intimate relationship between Jesus and the Father. 
how we, because of that intimacy, we live and move and have our being. The metaphor he uses, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes and makes it bear more fruit. God is the vine grower, the one who tends the vine, who knows intimately not only the vine, but through the vine, the branches that will bear fruit and those that will bear no fruit. The one who knows where and what needs to be trimmed and pruned in order for more growth to occur, to bear more fruit, to bear what is right and good, and to be generous as possible with God's love. Jesus is the vine whose roots are deep, whose branches extend from him from his being. <clears throat> from his being. Jesus tells the disciples, those that abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me you can do nothing. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This metaphor reveals our dependence on Jesus to do the will of God in our daily lives, through our words and actions, the choices we make, the differences we can make. This metaphor reveals our interdependence with Jesus to use the gifts we have been given and to be who we are created to be. This is a lifelong process with times of desolations and moments of consolation. Along with the way, along the way, and the promise of the Spirit to walk with us, to guide us, to be there for us, to comfort us, to forgive. The epistle, the epistle of First John, also speaks to this abiding relationship with God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The word he uses is love, love that is from God, a love so deep that God sent God's only Son into the world to be an atoning sacrifice for sin, for our sins. Because of God's love for us, we are to love one another. John is so firm in this belief that those who are listening have no choice. We have no choice. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that he, that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. I smile whenever I read that because Bishop Robert Anderson from the Diocese of Minnesota, where I grew up in my faith, where I was supported to be, uh, to attend seminary and to be ordained, when he would end the service, he would sing God is love. And those who abide in God 
Excuse me. God is love. Maybe I should sing it. <laughs> God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God. And God abides in them. Every service that he celebrated, which for many, <laughs> he ended the service at the blessing, and then he would give the pastoral blessing to the people. But that that's a wonderful memory that I have of this verse. We are called to choose love. We are called to receive love. We are called to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. And we are called to give love freely as Jesus did. God and the presence of God is all we need in our labor, our seeking, our listening which is very important in faith, our reaching in, our reaching out, our gathering. When we gather together as a community of faith on Sunday, when we go out into the world as we are finished, we are strengthened and we are given the resources and skills we need the love and grace and the mercy of God. And God, God's love and God's grace and God's mercy is the cause, it is the purpose, it is the foundation, it is the joy of our faithfulness and our fruitfulness. Let us pray. May the long time sun shine upon us. God's love is in us. May God's love shine on all people. God's love is all in all. May all people know God's love. God's love fills us all. May the pure light of God's love lead us to love others. Amen. Please stand. Let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and to see them who have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge my baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are found um, in Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church 
this prayer and in prayer for the prayers for the Church of Bangladesh that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, especially Jessica and Bob, our wardens, Connie, Deanna, Robin, Sharon, our vestry, for those in the armed forces and especially those deployed. Mikey Raina Mains, in our parish cycle of prayer, Eileen Allen, George and Deanna Chrisman, for those celebrating birthdays, Connie Herrick, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Mary, our priest, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Louise. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We, may, we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Eileen, Eileen, go ahead and read the names of the people. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Louise Christie, Jane Clothier, Emmy Hine, Sue Hallingstad, Tom Hallingstad, Connie Herrick, Wayne Herrick, Sharon Johnson, Ruth Nabel, Cindy Lawrence, Dorothy and Dave McDonald, Greg Nelson, Suzanne Nelson, Chris Nelson, Mary Nichols, Jerry Ramsey, the Raina Manus family, Jason Smith, the Weingart family, Jimmy Yanni, Bob Yorn, that they may be delivered from their distress. Hasten, O oh Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you for joining the St. John the Divine podcast. If you are interested in worshiping with us, you can visit us at 9 a.m. at our church, which is at 216 East Chandler Boulevard in Burlington, Wisconsin. If you want to learn more about us, you can click the link in the description or visit stjohnthedivine.org. Just remember, we're the one in Burlington, Wisconsin, not the cathedral in New York. Have a great day. Bye.